Greetings and salutations, Second Star Right, back with more Raid Shadow Legends, and I, I've done as much preparation as I can, I think, for this Double Void Summons event. Uh, the Double Void Summons event, for whatever reason, just never feel as satisfying as their uh, corresponding Ancient Shard Double Summons events, right? I don't know what it is. I always feel, and, and maybe this is just a feeling, it's not based on any kind of mathematical calculation, but Ancient Shards, I feel like I get a lot more epics and legendaries than I ever do with, with voids. Uh, voids are always, they're painful for some reason. I don't know why, but that's okay. Um, I'm wearing the purple tie, and so ho hopefully the purple tie will help us get a little bit luckier in our void summons pulls. And I have a nice uh, space side single malt scotch. Uh, this is a Glen Fodry. Um, brewed out of the pristine waters of the Spey River, which has a very, very low uh, total dissolved solids count. Um, so the flavor of the water doesn't actually impact the flavor of the scotch. Nice cork thing in the... Oh my god. Oh boy, okay. It smells so good. It um, actually has a French wine cask finish. So they start out with the American white oak, and then after it's matured uh, sufficiently, they transfer it to uh, French wine caskets. And oh my god. Oh, it smells, it smells so good. So I was thinking, maybe like every time I get a rare, I'll do a shot, right? But then I thought to myself, uh, that is potentially dangerous because I have something like 20, what do I have? 24 void shards. So that's potentially 24 shots. And I'm trying to wonder, you know, at what point will I lose the complete capability of calling 911 to uh, save myself from alcohol poisoning after 24 shots? That I figure would not be a good thing to do uh, live on a, or on a YouTube video. And I guess you guys probably never see it because I'd be dead. All right, so we're going to hold off on that. But then I thought maybe we'll do a shot every time we get an epic. Uh, and then I thought, okay, well, great, but that's just, like, probably one shot in the entire video, and what's the whole point in doing that? And if, then if it was legendaries, I might, might just be sitting here, This the cork would never come out, and um, that would just be the end of it. So, I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do that. We'll, we'll talk about the Glen Fodry because it's it's a magnificently brewed uh, single malt. But then I thought, maybe we'll just... We'll just move on, right? And we'll see what happens at the end if uh, if it deserves a shot or if not. So we're gonna we're gonna go with that. All right, let's see here. Um, I have twenty four. I could conceivably, if I wanted to, there is a uh, where's my where's my shop? The microphone's in the way. Sorry about that. So in the in the shop in the special editions, I got the first chain offer. The second chain offer is six void shards. So I could conceivably, if I wanted to, get up to thirty void shards. Um, however, it's 30 bucks for a six shards and some some silver and some gems, and that's that's insanity. That is a, a stupid, insulting offer that I refuse to participate in, right? So if, and if I was taking shots every time I had a rare, by the time I got to the end and I was still conscious, um, I would think that this $30 was a good idea, right? Uh, because my inhibitions and decision-making capability would be so impaired, I wouldn't know what I was doing at the time. So, again, another reason to just stay away from that at this time. So, instead, let's just let's go into it. Let's look at my let's look at my chambers. Make sure I have enough space. Do I have, what do I have here? One seventy-one. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We can go in and we can continue with our void chart summons, and we'll start that right now. Twenty-four. Let's go. Uh, I, I might stop at twenty if it's if it's if it's if it's bad, right? Um, hey, look at that! <laughs> right off the bat, I, I get uh, one of the new dwarf champions, Dilgol. I guess I, I don't I don't like the double L's in there. It doesn't roll off the tongue very smoothly. But regardless, uh, this means that there's one less event that I have to uh, frantically participate in and spend my energy on because he's required for the fusion. Okay, good. What does he What does he do? By the way, is he a good champion? Crippler attacks an enemy. Forty percent chance of placing a fifteen percent. Decrease speed debuff for two turns. Okay, decrease speed, all right. Um, we have an AoE that attacks all enemies. No, attacks all enemies twice. AoE twice. Each hit, the 50% chance of placing a decreased accuracy debuff for two turns. Okay. Um, we all know how I feel about decreased accuracy. You can't really see it in effect, so you never know if it's good. Big Game Hunter. Um, that sounds like uh, uh, another skill that uh, Steel Boyer has. Attacks the enemy three times. Each hit has a 40% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense buff for two turns. Um, well, I guess that's that's kind of cool. It does a lot of damage. You get the 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 big version of decreased defense on 40%. Um, you can get that chance up to 
60, 65% chance, and then down to four turns. It's fine. He's not a game-changing rare, but he's not bad. But it doesn't matter because he's a fusion food. Okay, next. Okay. Again, Draconis, that's two Void Champions in a row that I need for the fusion. I already got this guy, but if I wanted a duplicate, um, I now have one. Uh, what does he do? Attacks the enemy, heals the ally with the lowest hit points by 7.5% of the damage inflicted. Okay, that depends. Uh, plays a shield buff on all allies equal to 15% of this champion's max hit points. So you actually get that shield up to 20, 30%. Actually, that's not a bad skill. That's, for a rare, that's not that's not bad. And when this is essential level 3, Order of Mercy attacks the enemy, removes all debuffs from the ally with the lowest hit points, then heals them by 25% of the damage inflicted. Um, there's a lot going on in that skill. I don't know how useful that would be. I guess it just depends on who you're, who you're fighting. But um, I don't know how I feel about that. There's too many, too many conditions, and, and I think we put too many conditions on skill, it becomes devalued. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, another rare, and it is Hollow. Um, I actually kind of like Hollow in Faction Wars. Uh, you know, if you don't have anything better. Um, he has a poison, and he has a uh, turn meter reduction, and he has uh, ignore defense. So that's kind of cool. Uh, he has a lot of some, some decent things going on uh, for a rare. He's not a bad champion, if you don't have anything else. Okay, moving on. Oh, look, we have our first epics running in, and it is Rowan, who was buffed. I don't think she was really buffed enough to make her super usable, but um, she has been buffed, so let's uh, quickly review her skills since uh, since she has been buffed. Okay, a 60% chance of placing a 50% heal reduction for two turns, and when you ascend it, um, it's 100% heal reduction for two turns. Okay, interesting. Attacks three times under A2, each hit the 40% chance of placing a stun. Okay, so that's not that's not too bad. Uh, random stuns on three. Okay, attacks the enemy four times. Each hit has a fifty percent chance of placing a poison for two turns. Um, that's cool. Having a four turn attack is really neat. Um, you can get that down to three turns. So there might be some some usage here, um, like in Fire Knight or some other clans like that. Um, placing a what? Poison. And placing poison's good. Eh, she's she's still fine. I still don't think that that the buff made her super super viable, but um. Um, yeah, you know, it's fine. As far as Void Epics go, not my first choice. And what do we have here? We have Ragemonger, who was really, really, if you get Ragemonger early, he's a great champion to get. Like, maybe your first Void Shard you get. Uh, he's got a continuous heal on his A1, he's got Poison, and he's got HP Burn. So he can really help you out in Clan Boss early on when you're first starting your account. Um, Ragemonger's pretty decent. All right, and we have our second epic coming in here, and it is Sawai Firstborn. Um, I did a review on her a few months ago uh, when she was fusion food. Uh, she's not bad. She's fine. She does a decent amount of damage when geared correctly. Um, uh, attacks the enemy with a 50% chance of placing a decreased defense, um, but if you ascend that, you can get the. Uh, um, you can also get a crit damage uh, and increased attack. So uh, it's definitely worth ascending that skill. It's, that's a really nice, really nice A1. Um, utter Rampage is her A2, attacks enemy, but then she attacks all enemies with a second hit if the attack is critical. So you definitely want to build her for um, as close to 100% crit as you can get. And it deals 80% of the damage inflicted from the first hit, which sounds bad. But I did the, in the video when I did it, if you add it all up, it actually does a decent amount of damage uh, to everyone. Because it's always going to be normal, so we'll, that extra stuff can't crit, but it's actually uh, not that bad. Okay, uh, Dead in Reactions attacks one enemy before attacking the 75% chance of placing a Weaken for two turns. So that means you're actually going to, when you put the Weaken on first, uh, your your hit registers with the Weaken so you get the extra damage. So at the higher levels, it's really noticeable. Alright, so I didn't need Sawai Firstborn, but uh, she's not a, a, a bad champion. She's overlooked, um, but when built strongly, she can, she can really bring the pain. Um, Harrier, um, when paired with uh, Hospitaller, uh, he does pretty well, but you can also, if you don't have Hospitaler or don't feel like building Hospitaler up, uh, he actually runs pretty well with a champion that gives extra crit rate or, um, or crit damage. Uh, he's not that bad. He actually hits really hard in the right circumstances. Oh my gosh, why? what the heck's going on? Why are we getting all these epics? This never happens. Uh, Faceless, again, it's another dupe, but um, 
Faceless is another really good champion. I love champions that ignore defense, and Faceless uh, has a good skill for that. Uh, his Fireball is level 1. His first is this A1? Tax enemy, 50% chance of placing extra hit. I love extra hits. I love ignoring damage. Faceless is a champion that I really like. Increased crit rate. I love increasing crit rate because it lets you uh, gear di uh, differently uh, for more damage rather than trying to get crit. Um, so I like that skill too. And then his A3 is awesome. Uh, Tax enemy and ignores shield and block damage buffs as well as defense. So blocks everything. It's, it's just pure damage coming through on his A3. And it's pretty fantastic. Okay, moving on. What the hell is going on? Why? Did... Glenn? Is this you? I didn't... I didn't drink anything. Oh, it smells so good. What is going... Okay, this is unprecedented. Uh, again, it's another it's another dupe, but Lightsworn is really really good champion. Uh, he's got a got a nice uh, three three turn potential res. Uh, he's he's fantastic. Lightsworn is really good. Uh, Malbrank um, Malbranch. I don't know exactly how to pronounce the champion. She looks badass, right? I love the uh, the female demons um, in this game are really cool looking. I really I don't know about it. I don't know about it. Uh, I mean, I just I, mean, I guess that's just me. I think they look great. Um, she's a bomb champion, and she can reduce the turn uh, meter of other bombs. Like so she can decrease it so that their detonation time is lowered. So she can help on a bomb squad team. I did a video about that too. I took all the worst bombers and put them on a team to see how they could perform. And uh, <laughs> yeah, as you can anticipate, they didn't perform well. But you know, it was interesting because bombs ignore defense, and again, that's a, a thing that I like because a lot of people stack defense. All right, and here we have. Ah, uh, stone skin. I don't like looking at stone skin. He's hideous. Okay. And Huntress. Uh, not a very good champion, but she looks great. Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, another, another hollow. Um, as we said, he's, he's decent enough. Hmm. Okay, is this Painkeeper? Oh, Painkeeper. Painkeeper is fantastic. Um, I still haven't six-starred mine. She does, I have her at, at level 15. She does great at level 50. I can take her into a lot of the endgame stuff still, even at level 50, and she manages to survive because she's, she's just a really well-designed champion. She's not as godlike as she was before um, she was nerfed a couple months ago, but um, still, Painkeeper is great. And for those who are unfamiliar with Painkeeper, text enemy twice, fills the champion's turn meter by 10%, and then... Uh, a spectacular sweep is a heal, um, attacks all enemies, and then heals this champion by 15% um, of his champion's max, hit, max hit, hit points. But the the key is when you ascend it, um, heals all allies by 15% of this champion's max hit points. So you can see how stacking hit points on this hit point based champion uh, can do wonders for your team. It increases the cooldown of all ally skills by a turn. It's on a seven turn cooldown that you can get down to four turns, and so that's not bad. Um, really, Pink Keeper is really, really. Uh, like a key component to a lot of different team compositions. Okay. And Bloodhorn, who's not a very good champion. I have nine left. I I, I feel guilty. I wanna I need a man eater. I don't have I don't have the champion necessary for an unkillable uh clan boss team, and I would really like that in a, and you need um you need man eater. Preferably two. I got another what the hell is going on? I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I would never do that. I've got... This is... I haven't seen uh, this many epics in a Void Shard pull event in... I don't... I don't... I don't know how long. I wait. Ever, I guess. I, this is probably a fair statement to say ever. And Paidma, I do not have a Paidma. So this is my first non-dupe uh, today, um, other than the new uh, rares that I got at the very beginning. Um, Paidma is really cool looking. Um... Yeah, sweet. I love I love the Demon Spawn women in this game. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't even know what Pavement does other than she has some buff still somewhere. Uh, attacks the enemy two times. If this attack is critical, has an 85% chance of placing a decreased attack buff on all enemies for two turns. That's good. A2 attacks all enemies. Another AoE. Attacks the enemy twice. Okay, AoE, her flesh warp, attacks all enemies. The 35% chance of placing a 25% decreased accuracy to buff for two turns. And what happens when you send that? 50% uh, decrease accuracy. Okay, so uh, that that's potentially wasted uh, uh, A2 unless it does a, uh, unless it has some nice damage, unless it has a nice damage multiplier. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't have to look into her A2. A3 must be the good one. Attacks the enemy, removes all buffs from the target, and places them on this champion. Which is cool. It's, it's always nice to, to completely upend someone's strategy, right? Uh, by stealing all their buffs and giving them to yourself. Uh, that's kind of cool. Padma is neat. I've always wanted a Padma. Um, so I am a pretty happy camper right now that I got one. What the? What? 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 <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I I literally do not know. The words that come out of my mouth have lost all meaning, I guess, because I don't know what's happening. Skull Crown, again, one of the top void, uh, <laughs> the top void epics. Really great. I don't know. It has turned around my 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 uh, arena team um, back in the day when I first pulled the skull crown. Uh, she's fantastic. Tax all enemies, extra hit if the target has more than fifty percent hit points. Um, so she synergizes really well with her uh, sister in arms, Sinesha, who does that same skill under fifty percent. And then uh, corrupting touch, attacks all enemies, the fifty percent chance of placing a weaken for two turns. Then, of course, uh, she puts an unkillable on herself. So if you're facing a nuke team and they nuke, um, your uh, squ more squishy skull crown can still stay alive. Um, <laughs> really. And she re revives herself when uh, a Sinesh is on the team. Uh, and she has the speed aura in arena. A skull crown's just really good. I already have one. But again, I'm not going to... I can't believe... I can't believe all these epics I've got. This is insanity. This is absolutely crazy i've never i've never seen anything like this before and reliquary tender is a fantastic rare um she should be a staple uh when reliquary tender first came out Stu said you know why don't you make her one of the daily login rewards um instead of uh uh, uh replacing a different champion because she's really really good um really really she's like a like a super spirit host yeah except she revives also she's she's really great okay captain america thank you centurion or uh Metal spider, iron spider, I guess, with the, the blue. I don't know. Next. Okay. And this is Confessor. Confessor's actually kind of cool. I, I, I wish that I had gotten Confessor early on in my game so I could have built her out a bit more um, because she actually has some cool skills. Uh, turn meter by 15% on her A1. An AoE A2 that has decreased accuracy. And then A3 um, grants an extra turn. So the A1 and the A3 I think are really, really cool skills. All right, next. Okay, okay, and we have a uh, painsmith. I don't think I, I had a painsmith. I think I, I had one and then fed him to something for some reason, so I don't think I have a painsmith right now. Um, someone was asking me on my channel about painsmith, so I'll have to investigate a little bit. Uh, what does painsmith even do? I don't know. Um, he just attacks on his A1. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, enemies killed by the skill as A2 can't be revived. Okay, well, that's good. Nice block revive uh, on a rare, which is nice. Um, and block buffs on this champion if the attack kills an enemy on this A2 if it's ascended in A3. Attacks the enemy damage increases by 15% if the target has no active buffs. Okay, so it seems, seems interesting. Seems interesting. Okay, let's go. Okay, and Doom Screech. Uh, very good. Uh, very, very... This is a champion that I seem to pull all the time. So let's move on. Okay... Daywalker. What does Daywalker do again? I forget. Place an extra hit if the target has more hit points than this champion. But he's a hit point based champion. Oh, that seems like a weird skill. Okay. 25% um, ally protect for two turns. And then he can revive himself. And then attack all enemies after being killed. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, Alright. And our last one. Our last void chart. What do we get? What do we get? Okay. Uh, we have another Rage Mogger. So. Guys, that was for 24 shards. That was that was kind of crazy. It feels it feels like that was a, a, a that feels like that was a good pull session. Which I don't know how to say about that when when we're talking voids, right? I just you know uh, that that was good. And let's see how how did that help on our on our uh, uh, champion chase tournament? Let's see uh, champion chase tournament. And look at that. It got me uh, two of the champions. Uh, the Caden is up. And I got a book. Awesome. So <laughs> thank you very much, RNG. Jesus. That was that was a great. You know what? Salute. Salute to RNG. Jesus. Let's do a little. Mm. 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 Mm hmm. Oh, God. So smooth. It's like it opens up all the pores of your mouth. Oh, good stuff. So. 
drinks to everyone out there. Drinks to Aryan Jesus. That was a really, really good Void Pool session. I haven't seen anything that good in a while. Even though I really only got one new champion. Just the fact that that uh, that the statistics seem to be in my favor for once is is fulfilling, right? In that in that way, right? You don't feel like you got gypped. So way to go. Uh, that was that was a fun that was a, that was a fun session. I I enjoyed that for once. Usually I'm I'm in like a manic depression after I after I avoid chart pull, but this was a pretty good one. So thank you guys. If you enjoyed, please subscribe, uh, hit a like, and comment down below uh, how your void pulls in. If you also experienced an elevated percentage chance, uh, uh, seemingly without doing any actual math, it's just that that just seemed like a good pull session to me. And hopefully you experienced something similar. Guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all on the flip side. All right, take care, have fun, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.